continue. Good, good morning, everyone. I am Kyle Vili Saravan from Team Monomosin. Today we have a wonderful and special guest and an international author with us. Jolaya O is a Malaysian author, a play writer, and a screenwriter best known for horror short story collections. The Sheikh of Mishu passed them a horror by everywhere. The third book in the Nightmare Monster and Horus Treptek series at the Georgetown Literary Festival in two, of 2016. In 2019, one of her short stories was included in the Principal Girl to Manuscripts from Asian Anthology. Her book, second book, Earth by Night Mons, Nightmares, has been longlisted in Frank O'Connor International Star Story Award 2015 and won the third prize for popular the Star Readers Choice 2016. The story best kept the secret received an honorable mention from L. On Hubbard Writers at the Future Contest 2015. Welcome, ma'am, for a wonderful interview. Thank you so much for accepting our interview, ma'am. Thank you for having me, Kaya. Yes, ma'am. So first question I'm going to ask you, can you tell us a little about the, you know, how, could, how you thought you need to write a first, about only horror stories? Have you uh, got the interest to write, uh, write horror stories? Where do your stories emerge from? Okay, I grew up when I was very young, I grew up in the 60s and 70s. And I come from this very small town in Malaysia, it's called Taiping. And at that time, <clears throat> there's a lot of superstitions, there's a lot of understanding of supernatural beings around us. <clears throat> so it was partly something that I grew up with. So the, at that time, we have like Dracula's, vampires, werewolves, possessions. So it's like every day, it's like part of our everyday lives. So because of that, I was very, very afraid when I was much younger because everybody believes in supernatural beings and superstitious beliefs. So, and also in Taiping, a lot of people are very good storytellers. Every time, a few friends, families, relatives, even strangers, when we get together, the first thing we do is we tell stories. And whatever stories we start with, we will end up with horror stories. Yeah, yeah. So it became like a tradition. Uh -huh. So because of that, I was so interested in it because everywhere I turn, it's like horror here and horror there, you know. So I tried telling stories myself. And when I saw how fascinated the audience were, so I started writing instead. And of course, I was inspired by this uh, pen book of horror stories. It's a collection of horror stories, which is my favorite. And of course, uh, Stephen King books, you know, they are all his horrors like worldwide. And then, of course, watching TV shows like Twilight Zone, The Night Stalker, Night Gallery. So all these kind of like uh, helped me to become a horror writer first before I wrote anything else. So those were my influences. Yeah, ma'am. Uh, me too, like the Twilight uh, Saga series. It's a uh, wonderful thing. Uh, most of us are addicted to the horror stories. So you yes. become the most popular Malaysian short story writer for a horror thing. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, why do you think human beings have a fascination for those very things that scare us? Okay. Um, one of the things I know is people are very curious. Yeah. You know, if you tell people, uh, don't open that door, or that door is locked, or there's a note that says, don't touch this, mm -hmm. people will be like, but I want to do it. Mm -hmm. I want to know. Because people are attracted by the mystery behind it. We are always finding mysterious things within our homes, in uh, outside our homes. And I know a lot of people watch all these like um, crime series, even horror movie series, and then they listen to podcasts. It's because of the mystery behind it. But personally, for me, I love horror movies and books because I look forward to the twists at the end. You know, sometimes we read books and all that. Then when you reach the end, when there's a twist at the end there, there's a payoff. It's like, wow, you know, you did not expect it. I love it because it is like such a surprise. After bringing like 300 pages, then finally you find the answer. I mean, not all books are like that, but it is that kind of idea that attracts me as well. And people, I guess. 
Yeah, ma'am. We are yeah. very curious about the mysterious things. Yes. So, no, no, but uh, do you find it more challenging to write a first book in a series or uh, write a subs subsequent novels? Okay, to me, all books have their challenges. The, if you write the first one, whatever it is, a single one or in a series, it's like taking a step into the unknown. And then the subsequent ones that you write is like trying to find a way out of the unknown. You don't know what the obstacles are until you come face to face with it. So whether you succeed in getting out or you don't succeed in getting out, that's another question altogether. But to me, it's like this. So even if I start a new series, my old series have finished. It's again, going back to taking the first step into the unknown. Like, I don't know. I cannot tell you how good, how bad, but it's something like that. So to me, it's also the intriguing part of it that I enjoy. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's your. Yeah. Uh, and your story, Nightmares, Monsters and Horror, Chip Chip. Why did you choose that as a setting for your book? Okay, for one, I love the way it sounds because it's also placed with the word here, there and everywhere. It also plays with nightmares, monsters, and horror. So when I uh, started, I only had the titles in mind. I didn't plan every story, and I don't know what's going to happen. But because uh, I loved it so much, the three titles, I really pushed myself to writing and finishing it. So the very first book, just to share with you, yeah, yeah. this yeah, one, yeah, uh, here, here be nightmares. It is very influenced by Western ideologies and settings. Some of them might have English names or sounds like in the US and things like that. So the second one, it is a mix of local and Western flavor. They be yeah. monsters. Mm -hmm. So, you know, as I go along, uh, these things come to mind. I didn't plan it. So I say, okay, I'll do this. And then the last one, them horrors be everywhere. It became very Malaysianized. Everything I talk about takes place in each state of Malaysia. So there's 13 states and there's 13 horror stories. Then of course, like my latest one, Typing Tales of Terror. Yeah. These are all stories, like literally from my own backyard. Things that I learned and heard when I was uh, from my childhood. So that particular book is especially horror stories in typing itself. Uh, the typing stories so have your new book was uh, fully, uh, I think so, it's fully from your childhood memories. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, there it is. Yes. Uh, tell us about uh, being a writer in Malaysia and your experience in local literature world. Do you have any favorite local writers? Okay. The local industry here have gone far and beyond from what I experienced in the 70s and 80s. Because when I try to get published during that time, there were no publishers. There were no fiction publishers. And then you just have to try overseas, which is very difficult. A lot of them won't even accept because they don't know who you are. And locally, there's no one. But when Fixing No War came into the picture, which is started by Amir Muhammad, he got the ball rolling. That is when the Malaysian publishing history changed. Yeah. It was the first time unknown writers get to shine in their works. And it's both published in Malay and then in English. These are the ones that from Fixino. Yeah. Amir Mohammed accepted three of my books here. Yeah. So that's how I got them published. Otherwise, it's going to take a long, long time. And then the good thing is, since now there's a Penguin Random House Southeast Asia in Singapore, a lot of the writers from Fixino are also Penguin authors right now. And of course, there's this uh, Georgetown Literary Fest, which is spearheaded by Bernice Chorley. She also propelled the literary world in Malaysia and brought in the international recognition. That was how people came you know, to Penang, Georgetown, and then they got to know local writers. We launched our books there. And because of all this, it really, really changed the whole um, mindset of Malaysia publishing. And then my favorite local writers, there's a Zach Shah, he's a poet. Yeah. More than words is beautiful. The way he writes is very emotive. It brings all the emotion out. Yeah. And then there's a Mimi Masood. 
she wrote this Kuala Tungano in seven days. It's travel log comic. It is hilarious. It is so funny that when you read it, you are like uh, traveling with her. And then, of course, there's uh, short stories by Wong Min Yuk. She likes, she writes very lighthearted, very, very feel good kind of stories. After reading it, you feel like, wow, you know, I just like had a very good time with that. She wrote The Library of Size in the Courtyard of the Sun, Allow and the Paper Man. It's really beautiful. And then there's also Paul Ganaselvam. He wrote, uh, he has a collection called, he has two books called The uh, Elephant Trophy and Other Stories, Lata's Christmas and Other Stories. These stories are quite deeply rooted in the com Indian community. So when you read it, you understand the community even more. And the type of stories he tells you is like uh, one of those, you go to the roadside and maybe an old uh, elderly person tells you a story. It feels like that. It feels like this person is telling you and it's beautiful also. And of course, uh, Kam Raslan, he has his Confessions of an Old Boy. The Dato Hamid Adventures, it's another very, very hilarious uh, collection, but this is more towards the Malay community. Mm -hmm. So these are some of my favorite local writers. Oh, yeah, man. Uh, I also like that uh, feel-good stories as well as yes. horror stories. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, who is your Indian favorite author? Okay. I have very little exposures to Indian authors, actually. Mm -hmm. I only know them because of the competitions, because of award winning, but I used to have this uh, Rabindranath Tagore's yeah. Jitanjali. I have a very big book because it's beautiful, the poems. It is so breathtaking. It is like very meditative and contemplative. Mm -hmm. And then also, I like uh, Jumpa Lahiri, Vikram Seth, Arundhati Roy. And this is a new one that I just found out from some of my writer friends. It's called Punachi. Or the yeah. story of the black goat yeah. by Perumal Murugan. Mm. And I love stories about animals. You know, yeah. So when I found it, I already got it, but I haven't really gotten started. I'm really looking forward to reading it. Yeah, yeah sure. Uh, do you have any new series planned for your future? Any? A new series. Uh, oh, new series. Yeah. Yes. I have a lot of books planned for the future because like uh, it may sound a bit ambitious, but sometimes when you plan something, it doesn't work out. You know, I planned for this book. I wanted to finish by so such and such a date, but it did not come to the come to my liking. So what I do is I start on another one. And sometimes I start one, it finishes faster. So I actually have a, a few projects at the same time, like Gavin Darkside, Surya and the Supernatural Sleuths. And then I have a collection which I want to get out all the horrors you can binge. So I try to like, see which one will take me to the finish line. You know, something like that. Yes, we are waiting for that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, is anything you want to add that I, we knew too well about Julia? Oh, yeah. How about yourself? Okay. okay um, Typically, if you want to know a writer well, especially an author, a writer, whatever it is, you read what you write. Yeah. You know, it doesn't tell you everything, but at least you see things from their point of view. You know, the words they use, mm -hmm. the ideas they behind it, the plotting. Mm -hmm. Then, of course, you can watch the Instagram space or Facebook page to see what they like or what they are doing. You know, like the little things that you don't find out um, during interviews and all that. But of course, other than that, I always find like uh, I'm very ordinary. I'm like everyone else in the world. It's just that I love writing. I love gardening. Yeah. And I love admiring nature. I love watching the clouds. I love watching the rain. I love, you know, all these like streams, rivers. Yeah. You know, beauty, uh, nature is really a big part of my life. So that's the most you can know about me. Yeah, uh, most of you think most of the people think uh, you are only um, uh, interested in horrors but other side of you have a beautiful thing which is you are connected through nature and um, beautiful yeah. scenery yeah, uh, yeah, yeah you are a good example for a human being for they have a different two sides 
you have a mysterious sides and also a nature and a loving and a feel good things yeah it yeah. was so so good uh, do you have any special advice for our young generation or young writers yes to the young writers or even to the young people who are not writers whatever you want to do in life go for it there are two things that helped me when i was a young kid it's called lesson of the moth by don marquis and the book the small little uh, novella called jonathan livingston seagull by richard park the first one is about a moth he wanted so much to go into the flame but uh, the cockroach told him if you go there you will die but the moth said flame is so beautiful i just want to be a part of beauty then to live forever be- without being a part of beauty and then second book jonathan livingston seagull is about a seagull who wanted to perfect his uh, flying yeah. everybody tells him you don't need to it's not necessary but he wanted to he wanted to see how far he can go like from how high he can go how beautiful he can fly mm-hmm. so these two books affected me and taught me a lot so what i want to tell you young people is you can get a lot of help from anyone and everywhere in the world but the first thing you do is take the first step because you are your own best friend first before anyone else trust your instinct love yourself and go where you are meant to go and be what you are meant to be that's my advice thank you so much ma'am and you welcome and i think so you are aware of aware of our upcoming contest uh, which are we are collab with chetan bhagat uh, do you have uh, any uh, special things to share with us about that contest about the writing contest yeah 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 okay uh, whoever wants to write for a writing contest don't worry about the prize because sometimes these things are not the most important yeah. don't worry about the what do you call it exposure yet and just write from your heart if you feel that horror is what you want to write first write it because sometimes horror is not about uh, murder and chaos and ghosts and all it's psychological it's from our brains Yeah. we are afraid of something we want to get over it so write it if you want to write a love story because you miss someone you miss something go ahead don't let people tell you what to write what to do and then you get scared when you get scared you get stuck and you won't finish your work you write as beautifully as you can finish your work and then don't worry whether people will like it or not that is another step you have to go to yeah yeah it's in a super thing you shared with us and thank yes. you so much for sharing your precious time with us thank you so much yes. ma'am you're welcome thank you so much.